What's good peeps? Thanks as always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. Please like and share the video as well. It will help the channel a lot. And you can support the channel as well now. I do have a Patreon account. The link is in the description. All right, let's talk Daniel Dubois for a few minutes. In fact, before we talk Daniel Dubois, let me quickly um, address something that was brought to my attention today. Um, for some reason, I can kind of see how people have maybe come to this uh, conclusion. But for some reason, people think that Sky are paying for me to go out to Saudi Arabia to um, cover or watch the AJ Ruiz fight. Please. <laughs> please, Sky, if you're watching and you want to pay for me to go, please do send me a check and let me use that money and go over and watch and cover the fight. I would be fucking happy. But no, that's not what's happening, people. Um, not at all, in fact. Um, no. No. <laughs> That is, you guys should know me by now. I'm very transparent on this channel. I'm probably too transparent. But um, if um, me going to Saudi Arabia was anything to do with uh, me saying that I've got a sky job, I would tell you. Because I'm just that guy. I'm, I'm, what you see is what you get, by the way. I am just that guy. I would say that sky are paying for me to go to Saudi Arabia. And I just wouldn't lie to you. Just like the way I've not lied to you about me getting the Sky job or me going for this interview or that interview or the Fox job or this or that. I'm pretty fucking transparent. Uh, my Sky job has nothing to do with boxing. Um, in fact, just a quick update for those of you that want to know about the Sky job. I do start January the 6th. Uh, my Sky job is all about Premier League football and maybe some sort of championship and League One stuff, but it's mainly about Premier League football. That's it. Nothing to do with boxing. Um, me going to Saudi Arabia is off of my own back. It is literally off my own back for this channel. And I might be doing some stuff out there for CNN and a few other channels I've reached out to asking, look, I'm out there. Do you want me to do something for you just to make a bit more money? That's it. So let's kind of um, stop the, the, the bullshit rumors. It's not true. Um, I wish it was true. This is the funny thing. If Sky were saying to me, Adi, we'll pay you to go over there and cover it for us, I would fucking bite their hand off. So there's absolutely no reason for me to, to lie about that. All right, let's talk Daniel Dubois for a few minutes. Um, I interviewed Daniel Dubois. I sat down with him and Frank Warren, um, not last week, the week before, um, as Daniel Dubois announced that he's going to fight Fujimoto at the Copper Box Arena. Um, part of the interview, or, or I can't remember when it was, but maybe a few minutes into the interview, I asked Frank Warren if he thought that Daniel Dubois was a, a top 15, top 20 heavyweight. And by the way, I thought that was quite reasonable. If I'm honest with you, I was thinking of asking if he's a top 30. But I kind of, because <laughs> I saw Daniel Dubois looked fucking massive. He's manager, another person, his sister, Frank. I thought, let me be respectful and say, is he top 15, top 20? Uh, Frank kind of immediately shut me down and said, no, he thinks he's a top 10 heavyweight right now. And that he would be very comfortable in putting Daniel Dubois in with any top 10 heavyweight. He went on to further say... And I'm not quite sure if this was in the interview or at the press conference that Daniel Dubois will fight uh, for a world title in 2020 or be shocked if Daniel Dubois doesn't fight for a world title in 2020. So I guess the question I have um, to you, and I'm probably going to answer it myself during this video, is, is Daniel Dubois ready for that step up, that next level step up? And by the way, when I say step up, I'm not even talking about the elite guys. I'm not talking about Fury, Ruiz, Wilder, Joshua. I'm not even talking about Usyk, Dillian White. Can you remove those guys completely? I'm talking about the guys maybe a few steps below that. Do you think he's ready for that? Um, I have to be honest. I don't. I don't think that. Um, and I guess the simple answer to that question is, if he was ready for that step up, he wouldn't be fighting uh, Fujimoto. Right? Your last two opponents have been Latte now. Or was it Ebenezer Tess? I think it was Latte and now Fujimoto. If you were ready, if your camp felt that you were ready for that next step up, you wouldn't be fighting the Japanese heavyweight that no one's heard of. You, you just wouldn't be doing it. And this is no critique of Daniel Dubois. I think it's been a fantastic year for Daniel Dubois. Five fights this year, which is quite rare, let's be honest, uh, especially for a heavyweight, quite rare. Um, he's become British champion, Commonwealth champion, had that grudge match with Nathan Gorman, won that young British box of the year. So I think it's been fantastic. And I think the movement has been good. What I don't want to happen with him in 2020 is by what Frank is saying and other people around him are saying is in that he is ready for these elite guys and he's ready for a world title at the end of 2020 because he's not. 
He's not. 2020, for me, should be a case of just adding to your, your numbers. And what I mean by that is fight guys maybe just a couple of steps you know, below you, get those wins, learn, ma match them up properly in terms of fighting guys that you can learn from, not guys that you just knock over. And then 2021, or maybe the very back end of 2020, he takes another step up and fights maybe a gatekeeper, um, a Carlos Takam type. But um, there should be no rush for Daniel Dubois to be moved so quickly. Um, again, that's why I was hesitant to even ask top 15, top 20, because I was being very honest when I, when I said top 30. I think there's a massive gap between the very elite guys, where Frank seems to think Daniel Dubois is or can be in the next sort of few months, and Daniel Dubois. I think there's about 25 fighters in between that. I'm not even taking the piss. I know people like to get excited and they'll look at the knockout record. You know, he stopped, I think, all but one of his opponents. I think the one guy he didn't stop is Kevin Johnson. Um, I think every good prospect would equally knock out all those guys. I think Hergovic would knock out all those guys. I think F.A. Jagba would knock out all those guys. I think Tony Yoko would knock out all those guys. No one's calling for them to have a world title shot back end of 2020. No one's calling, no one's even saying those guys are top 10 guys right now. So I think we need to, or Frank needs to rein in the lofty expectations he has for Daniel Dubois. I get why he's doing it as a promoter. You've got to sell your product, right? Especially when Daniel Dubois doesn't sell it himself. But I think what you don't want to do is set, or sorry, set realistic goals, sorry, unrealistic goals. Um, and I think 2020, again, should just be about, you know, continuing to do what you've done in 2019. You know, fight guys, again, maybe around the top 30. Um, and then you can move for 2021. He's only 21 years old. I kind of started there because I was thinking, is he 20, 21 or 22? I think he's only 21 years old. He has all the time in the world, right, to grow and learn. Um, I don't want to hear stories about knocking over anyone in spar. I don't want to hear any of this shit. I just want him to grow and learn. And fingers crossed we have a good prospect in here. But I don't think it's a prospect that should be rushed. Um, I was even thinking about possible matchups because everyone, I mean, sorry, Frank San, he's a, a top 10 guy, whatever. I don't think Daniel Dubois could beat a Derek Chisora right now. I have to admit, especially this version of Chisora that looks a lot stronger, a lot bigger, rugged, experienced. I don't think he can beat him. And I've actually seen them two spar. I have. Um, so he, he's not ready yet. And again, this is no criticism of him. Um, this is just me looking at what he's done and who he's done it against and not getting overly excited. What do you guys think? Ready for the big boys. Would you chuck him in with, and this is at the back end of uh, 2020, would you chuck him in with a Michael Hunter, say, or a Povetkin, depending upon who wins or loses in that fight, a Kubat Pulev, you know, is he higher than a Joe Joyce? I, I really don't know where he is right now. And um, until we beat someone of note, um, and don't say Nathan Gorman, someone of note, I'm still going to be a bit reserved because what he's doing is what I expected him to do. Peace.